In today's video, I'm going to talk about some Olympic shenanigans. No, not the opening ceremony, something different, uh, but kind of related. Uh, and I want to pose the question that's been asked many times before. Well, why did the ancient Greeks do the Olympics naked? And what I think, I'm not saying I'm 100% on this or anything, it's just a theory that makes sense to me, is that it is to stop people from cheating. And if everybody's naked, I think it's a lot harder to cheat. And not only in ways of like hiding something, hiding, let's say you're doing discus and you have some sort of mechanical arm brace underneath or something, I don't know, but cheaters have always existed and always will exist. And people are constantly cheating. And being naked, I think, is one way that you could have a lot less cheating. And not just in, like I said, hiding something under your clothes, when people think of the past, they assume that stuff that we have today, that there's no way that it existed in the past. And that's things like hormones. Hormones were, it's not like they didn't exist in times past. I mean, pine pollen is basically testosterone. And you can make female hormones out of horse urine. And these people had nothing but time and abundant nature at their disposal and tons of alchemists brewing up various potions, I think it would be wrong to think that the ancient Greeks didn't know about hormones. And there's actually, there's a really interesting thing in the King James book on demonology about witches having potions that would render men unable to be men anymore and potions that would make men so much more manly. They knew about it. Maybe they didn't know exactly all of the uh, uh, intricate things that we think about today that makes us think, oh, this is modern. Nobody ever had this before. Uh, that's just one of those spells that they, they cast on people that they think anything modern medicine has never existed before in the past. But I mean, even today, if something comes from modern medicine, they have to they have to get it from somewhere at a certain point. And a lot of times the process is a lot more crude than you would think. Like what's the difference between surgery and hacking somebody open with a sharp piece of obsidian and uh, sewing, they literally sew people together. And <clears throat> same thing with hormones. They still create, you have a pill, but you might not know, oh, that pill comes from boiling pregnant horse urine. Anyways, let's get into the, the news topic of the day. And uh, I know that the whole, okay, to, to stop people from cheating, I guess I didn't say being, being naked, people could see if their testicles were atrophied. That's a common occurrence. Or if people had gyno, then you would know, oh, that, that guy's drinking too many of the, the witch's potions and they would be disqualified. Uh, that's just a theory, because it's not 100% applicable to today's topic, which is about, well, how are we certain, especially in today's day, where we, me, not me personally, uh, society is saying, yes, queen, and you're brave and beautiful and stunning for, for changing your gender, how are we certain about sports what's going on with sports and i mean this has always been going on what i would have to say about this is well why don't people come clean about the four types of people and and why hasn't anybody come out about how women's sports has been rigged since the beginning because you have different classes of women and a castrato or somebody with swire syndrome is always going to outperform uh a woman who is not that way. So really sports should have more than just two, uh, two classes. And yeah, this is such a, such a twisted, a twisted topic. And you see why there are people out there that do support trans in sports because they've known that that's been going on forever. But, uh, I mean, to mention the, the Williams brothers, they, I, I a hundred percent believe that that was a guy, an abusive dad with a plan to turn his boys into tennis stars. And, and he knew that if you, 
you get a boy to compete in women's, they're going to smash the competition. And, uh, and then you're going to get swires who are complaining because they have to face these uh, men. I mean, just look at that on the left. Nobody would think that that's a woman at all. <laughs> Female boxer feared for her life during brutal 46-second fight against opponent who failed gender test. I guess they were just doing hormones, hormone testing. Well, I don't know exactly in this case. I'm going to talk about one other person in a second. Uh, in one of the most shaming episodes in Olympic history, Italia's, uh, Italia's, Italy's Angela Carini was forced, after only 46 seconds, to abandon a fight out of fear for her life against an Algerian boxer who had failed two gender tests. And, uh, yep. So, I, I guess I'll just read about that it already detonated ferocious controversy with the International Olympic Committee under intense pressure to justify how a woman could be allowed to enter a boxing ring uncertain of the sex of the person she was facing. <clears throat> so, I mean, it really speaks for itself. Now, the, why it's not 100% applicable is that women didn't used to do ancient Greek Olympics, as far as we know. At least not married women were considered property, second class. They couldn't even visit. They couldn't even go and watch. And, uh, but certainly if all these people were naked, it'd be surprising what is uh, underneath their, their drawers. I've been seeing more and more. Like, on, on Instagram, there, I've seen some things on Instagram where, whatever, it's just a slideshow of like 10 or so different pictures. And I go to the comment. And the top comment's like, what is with the the last photo? And what's in that person's pants? Maybe I'll show it. I, I took a screenshot, I'm sure. And you flip through the slideshow, and lo and behold, the last, like, supermodel picture has some very suspicious things going on in the underwear. And the other ones, they're just tucking nine times out of ten. And the other times, they've had surgical Thailand-type operations. But this stuff is rampant. It is nothing new. And really, you can start to split hairs about, man, you, was was this person born with a penis? Are they intersex? Are they uh, swire? But they're also taking testosterone. It's it's a mixed up, muddled up, shook up world. And who knows? Maybe the ancient Greeks had the four different types of people more figured out, and the nakedness was part of. We're not letting anybody hide what's going on here, and we're gonna know if you're taking hormones and. Anyways, the, the drug testing is all a bunch of BS. In my opinion, it, that's kind of like a joke. When, when they say that they're doing Olympic drug testing, it's one of those things where they tell you what they're doing, but in a way where they make you think the wrong thing. When they say drug testing, your mind thinks that they're testing people to see if they're on drugs. I personally think that drug testing, they're really actually give, administering them drugs at that point, and they're testing out the new drugs, and that that's really what's going on, and they turn a blind eye to this stuff because everybody does it. Just like everybody in the Tour Tour de France was was cheating. They all they all cheat. <coughs> and uh this gender bending stuff is only one part of the fact that this world is run and operated by a bunch of cheaters and liars. And so you get cheaters and liars complaining that other people are cheating and lying in, in different ways from them. Viewers left in the dark. Or man on the ground. Oliver Brown. Uh, but for the TV viewers, there was absolutely no mention of why Iman's Caliph's presence is so polarizing. Notice that the TV's just pretending that nothing's going on. You have you have reality, and then you have TV reality. In reality, everybody knew what was going on, but in TV reality, they're just hush, hush, hush on uh, the obvious. Elevated levels of testosterone. <coughs> Well, I mean, that's it. This is it. Showing off the extreme digit ratio. They show off their hands like that. Because they're showing off the masculine digit ratio. That is an extreme masculine digit ratio. This person 
has more tea in their body than I do, probably. <laughs> I mean, they look like that. The hairline, everything is just a dude. This is what men look like. Well, what do you think? <laughs> I mean, more masculine than the, the one with the beard behind them. Caster, Semen, Semenya. Oh yeah, this person has like I man in their name. Is that what their, what's their name? I'll just end with that. What's Khalif's name? Where is it? Um, I'm missing it. Their, their name is, is really silly. I man, E, Khalif's presence. I man, I man, E. Well, that is it. For this video, I'm just laughing at the guy in the middle. Just look at the shoulders and the lack of, I mean, the bodies. Just compare the body of the, how is that referee supposed to do anything against the thing on the left? God bless everyone. Bonus footage, if you're still around. I wanted to end with this, but I forgot. This is after Serena, it looks like Serena Williams won gold at Wimbledon's. Uh, whatever the big tennis thing is, and... I think somebody was not not too happy about the the Williams sisters because people know people know that probably still a man and I think that that's why this happened personally and anyways <laughs>